met a gypsy. What with the pain thing, like did you what was like the relationship with pain like? Because dude, you you went through so much shit. Dude, to be to be honest, like at one point I it was it was really fucked up because I had a broken femur, I had a broken humerus, I had compartments you know, I collapsed a lung or something, broke some ribs, but that was not even on the radar. But I got compartment syndrome and I had to have all these surgeries and I was getting these I was getting these nerve pains Literally I remember just, hearing that it was so bad everyone was talking about your nerve pains like dude I would sit there and I couldn't like I, I like it was like I had like I would sit and rock like all day long I'd sit and rock and just get like like wow like twitch and rock and just like I'd be talking to you like I couldn't talk to anybody on the phone and something would just trigger me and like like I just went like totally recluse because like I couldn't carry conversations with people Wow! Like I'd go out in public and I'd try to be talking and, just, and like it was the most gnarly thing. I mean, I remember, dude, I was just like just laying, like laying in bed, just dude, straight up like com- contemplating trying to kill myself. Dude, I was like, just wondering that. I was like, man, I'd be fucking over and out. Eh? And I mean, I had a I had a girlfriend at the time that really like she she helped me out so much. Uh, and kind of helped me through like a lot, a lot of bad stuff at the time and kept me, you know, kept a lot of demons away from me. And, you know, I just was real loving and caring when I was, you know, injured like that. And that's probably the only reason, like, and just, I think just the thought of my family, but man, I'm telling you, like, it was really, really dark for me. Like I, it was months of this and I had to have like eight surgeries and then like I had to get my Achilles tendon lengthened just to, and then get all these bones broken. My foot or like, like everything adjusted just because so my foot would go at a 90 degree angle because I was trying to walk and I would burn holes through the bottom of my feet. Cause I had no muscle and that it was atrophied and my bones. It would just, I would get pressure sores. Even when I was racing for Hart and Huntington, like the first year I'd get off and like, I'd go qualify like, you know, good. And then get off and get on crutches basically and hang out until I had to go like, doctor my foot up and go race again like it, it was like it was but for for a good like eight months it was hell on earth dude like i couldn't carry a conversation without like stuttering and twitching like and i was down to like 135 pounds which i'm like a dude that if i don't diet and i'm walking around i'm 190 pounds yeah and i mean i was just like dude fuck that's heavy bro do people really know this shit no i lived in a hospital bed in the bottom of my like in my downstairs for like months in, in a hospital bed like in a hot like dude it was really it was not it wasn't cool how many people were like there for you through like did people really I had a stick couple through? buddies you know like i had some people that would stick through i mean i had because that's that's what's gnarly like when you get in those situations and yeah. then like you've got a lot of people around you and then something like that happens and then you don't have as many and that's like that i think that can fuck with your head a lot too a lot of people i mean dude like brian deegan came and see me in the hospital before i even knew brian really and i mean like matto would come see me here you know like and hang out and like i had a lot of good, like you know dudes that i looked up to would you know they would even reach out to me and then i had my good friends that would still stick around a lot of them went missing which that's cool like yeah you know, I, I don't some people don't like want to be around you know i i wouldn't necessarily want to be around that all the time you know if it's your buddy you try to help him out but like i understand both sides of it mm. but yeah definitely like you went from having like your party buddies they like they aren't around no more mm. and then your real buddies stick around you know like if you're having a good time and having people over like those dudes they, they started thinning out mm. when it got heavy but that was that was good though you know yeah i was gonna say like so, i mean as fucked up as it is like sometimes it's good to like thin out the herd a little bit especially it's like you you go from being like a dude making that much money and like it's so easy to have for those people to like want to be around you and then it's like you go through something like that dark like that's fucking i didn't know it's that bad like i heard it was bad but i didn't know it was that bad like that's fucking gnarly yeah i mean i had to go through about like eight surgeries and then what was really fucked up is my when i first came back my first race back i wasn't near ready but i, I could have made the main right and then, you know, I qualified, I think, 20th or something. But, I, like, I'm talking, it was really bad. Like, I really couldn't walk. Like, I was, like, it, it was, it was dumb that I even tried to race. But I get a, like, good jump and I come in the first turn and Villapoto overshot the turn and smashed right into me. And then my foot got stuck in between his, his frame and my frame and shattered my heel on my bad foot. And I didn't even feel it. I kept riding and then I just, wow. kept, like, cause I couldn't, I still don't feel my foot. Like I don't have, like if I stepped on a frying pan right now, I would smell it before I would hear it or like <laughs> feel it. Yeah. Holy fuck, bro. It's, yeah. But 
I, you know, I've just learned to adapt to it and just don't really think about it anymore. Dude, that's so hectic to go through. Like that whole, like that whole shaking thing. Like, man, I can imagine the fucking darkness that that would have felt like. I mean, I used to just sit there and just pray, like, just like, out. If you're here, listen to me. Like, just do something for me. Like, I am. Li- like, I feel like just I would just sit like every day, just like just by myself. Just you're not even crying anymore. You're just like just drained. And, you know, and I would just like dream and just pray of like the day that I could be able to walk again. And then like, as that was starting to come around, then I'm like dreaming and I'm praying about the day that, oh man, what if I could ever ride a dirt bike again and like race again? So like for me, all my prayers have really been answered except for it just took way more work. It wasn't yeah. like I woke up like, you know, yeah. See, I couldn't snap my fingers. I did out of my mouth. <laughs> I didn't just wake up and everything's fixed. It just took, it, it was like a process of years and years until I finally was like, you know, happy again and like pumped on, pumped on it. It was like, I had some dark times and, uh, dude, like but, ha- having to go to a hotel to like get off like meds. That's like, that's deep. Like you've had to go through some shit to get to a point because it's like, no one wants to be dependent on a painkiller like that literally no one wants to fucking have that thing to go through so it's like to go through that and to know that shit's bad and to know that that's your only option it's like that's a fucking gnarly deal i was starting to get temperamental i seen like the signs of myself that i seen in you know through bad examples and so even though i could still get stuff from the doctors like i just knew like hey that like this ain't I gotta give something else to try so that was your call yeah like it wasn't anyone else around no you. no and then like i went to dr g yeah and so i went to this got this like went to it was like a best western or something down the street from him and just checked in for a week and left left all the painkillers at home left everything at home and just was like i'm gonna hang out here and i'm gonna just i like would live at dr g's all day and then i just get up and or like you know i just go bounce back and forth between his and the hotel like the whole week until then like I was you know I just kept myself busy enough and had luckily had a guy like him to yeah. help me through it and be you know supportive and try to guide me because everybody else like yeah you're never going to feel your foot again just get used to it like which like you know doctors are kind of right like I know, but they're like you're never going to walk you're never going to do this like you're never you're just get used to being this way and Dr. G was like no no just you know keep doing this try this see if this works and although I never re- you know got full recovery like just that much of just putting effort into it for like two years, three years with his help. I mean, dude, the guy hooked me up and helped me through so much stuff. And I mean, I can't thank that guy enough. He's a special dude, man. I didn't have, I, I never had, fuck, I probably would have said 10 words to that dude the whole time I lived in America. Like he just wasn't around any of the guys that I was around and the guy, like he was around Robbie a lot, but like not when I was around him. But man, the way people talk about Dr. G is like he's he must be like a pretty special dude he's a great guy i mean he's uh he's just a good person you can tell i mean he's like yeah he's just a really nice dude he he means well he's smart and he yeah he's like i really owe that guy like the biggest debt of gratitude for all the help he did for all and all the things he did for me he's a good dude and he does with a lot i mean you see he's helping out like justin mulford right now a lot and like, yeah. he's doing like, he helps dudes that are down and out like with 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 injuries and he's got a lot you know just maybe he's just it's it's almost like a mentor th- type thing too he's yeah. really good to be around it's good positive energy i like him a lot if you're ever struggling with something and you're in california like that's find that guy we're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.